So my Alchemy Stars gang, I'm sorry that I haven't uploaded a video in like maybe two weeks. But like to be honest, it was feeling kind of dry. Like I felt like there wasn't overly much going on in Alchemy Stars. But alas, we finally have some content. We have some reveals of the kits of the new Aurorians that will be joining us in the part two of our current event. Pretty awesome, pretty hype. Not sure if I'm gonna roll. I'm honestly fighting myself again as I always do with every single banner I see. However, before I get too excited, let's run our opening sequence. Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about Rouge, we're going to be talking about Ruby and Florine over here. We are going to be doing some quick evaluations and then potentially seeing how they fit within the meta. But if you do want my TLDR on these three units, I reckon they are all very, very solid. In terms of meta at least, like waifu factor is through the roof, my guys. Alright, so with that said, let's start off with Rouge, who is turning out to be a 5-star fire unit detonator class with a pretty respectable amount of stats. Now, the interesting thing about Rouge and why I think she is so good is because she is very much like one of those, how do I say it, like the hybrid carries or kind of like a dual purpose character. So I'm talking like Michael with the teleport, but also does massive damage. The Carleen archetype where you can teleport and convert. Uh, we've got Phyllishai who can teleport and heal. Rouge, in my opinion, is very, very much like that. And it starts off with her active skill, Clam Fury. So choose one of 13 tiles in the diamond shape dealing 350% damage to the selected tile and its three surrounding clusters. That is most certainly the detonator part. However, moving through, forcing enemies within range to move two tiles towards the selected tile. And that, my guys, is the support aspect of Rouge, the Brock upgrade, heating, aggro mechanic, like a vacuum mechanic. I love to see it. Thank you for the sub, Julian Quiroga. But it is certainly characters like this that gets me excited about the game, right? Like where they are actually bringing something different to the table. And this is certainly something quite different. However, to finish off Clamp Fury, we do have the damage reduction of 53% per cluster. And so instead of being like dual utility, it's more like two options. It's or. You either do massive damage or you do the vacuum. Because if you pick the vacuum, the damage is just dramatically decreased. So yeah, a very very, very exciting skill, CD3 preemptive strike. Hopefully it's gonna be like CD3 base. And if it is a CD3 and BT0, then I would be pretty happy with this active skill. All right, moving on. Next, we have Frenzy, in which we are going to be doing one surrounding cluster, a diamond shape, and then a radial shape. Pretty, pretty standard at this point. I believe it's like pretty much the same as Sinsa. And then lastly, we have Vermilion Clash, where every third and fifth normal attack damage is going to be increased based on the target's remaining HP. Now, the interesting thing about this is that the increase reaches a maximum of 53% when the target is at its max. HP. So what that means is that if it, the target has less HP, you're going to be getting less of a bonus from this equipment. And so that's honestly pretty cool. Like you guys can probably see the use case for this. You really do want to be using Rouge as much as you can at the start of the match. On top of that, actually, every third and fifth attack, I'm wondering if you can actually share this around monsters. So for example, if there are like three mobs on the field and then you hit like twice on the first one, twice on the second one, and then you hit like one more time on the last one, just judging by the wording, I I do think that like the second mob in that scenario because like one two three it's gonna do like this extra vermilion clash damage and then four on the second mob and then fifth attack on the third mob i do think and hope that it works like that however there is also the other side in which you do have to do the third and fifth attack on the same enemy and this would actually really differentiate her between like being a boss killer or like a generalist detonator all right so that is rouge for you as for like if she fits in meta or whatever i i certainly think wherever you could use Brock or Keating or like those kinds of units, you certainly could use Rouge. But otherwise, if you do ignore her vacuum, she just turns into another detonator. And I think for fire, we have more than enough detonators. So if you are going to be using Rouge, it's very, very likely that you're probably going to be bringing her in for that utility. All right. And so next, let's move on to Ruby, who is a freaking water converter. Because like I look at her, I was like, man, she fire for sure. A hundred percent. Not nah, turns out she is water and a freaking cross converter at that. Very, very interesting tool dog. Very interesting. Okay, so just quickly looking at her profile, we've got water attribute converter class 2610. That's pretty standard for converters. And so with that, let's have a look at her active skill, which is moonshot. Select max cross shaped or max X shaped range deals 500% damage, knocks back the enemy and turns the tiles within the attack range into blue tiles. Very much like your upgrade to your Maggie or your Nemesis or your Barton, the direct 
direct upgrade actually to your Barton. And so because I'm theorizing that she is a direct upgrade from Barton, I do think that at BT0, we are going to see a CD5 on the active skill Moonshot. However, the nice thing about Ruby is that she can actually switch from cross-shaped to X-shaped, which is the first time I think we're actually seeing this pattern, or a conversion at least, because I do respect that some attackers uh, like Pact, they do do the X thing. Okay, and so on top of that, we've got inflict damage once on the enemy targets that are hit based on the current equipment skill level, which is nice because it looks like she's going to be scaling a little bit in terms of damage. And my guys, damage is always a good thing. Moving on, we have Strike Zone, which deals damage 130% to the two nearest enemies. And if there is only one enemy target, damage is inflicted twice. Okay, I'm, I'm a massive, massive fan of these skills. And so it's kind of like, okay, if I have two enemies, I'm going to split the damage. But if there's only one enemy, then I am going to focus everything on that enemy. And that's so good because I really, really feel like that's how snipers should be. Although, you know, Ruby isn't really a sniper. For snipers to be able to just like hone in on a target and deal massive damage to them. So yeah, I do hope that we see more snipers with this kind of chain combo. However, my guys, don't expect too much because she only has 2.6k attack, which is in line with converters. Like, I'm just just saying keep your expectations a little bit low in the damage department okay and so that's going to lead us to the equipment skill slugger where for every three times the chain combo deals damage to the same target inflict extra damage equal to three percent of the target's current hp and no less than 150 percent of ruby's basic defense to me honestly that sounds like quite strong and really makes up like some of it at least for this low attack well the naturally low stats for a converter i really do think the direction and the design of ruby like being a very very offensive converter it's well it's showing through to me right like i'm starting to see a pattern right where it's kind of good we've got like old units such as Raphael was kind of doing like a little bit of everything but not really excelling at anything but nowadays we have like this character over here ruby where she can convert but is also offensive focused and another example that comes to mind is siobhan where she can actually do conversions as well but then she is very very defensive honestly i really do like these character designs these unit designs that tour dog has been pumping out. So the last question for Ruby is, well, how is she going to fit in the meta? And it's kind of iffy for me because as much as I like her active skill and her like offensive kit, the fact that she is probably going to be a CD5 converter with no preemptive strike is going to be a little bit crippling, especially when her direct competition is Barton, who is going to be super, super cracked at MBT, which most people actually strive for. I am going to say that because an MBT Barton is probably easier to get he is probably going to be preferred over the Ruby, simply because it's easier to get CD4 preemptive strike on Barton. However, there is one scenario in which it would sway me to take Ruby, but not necessarily take her over Barton. And that is if at BT0, her CD for the active skill is actually at 4. Or if the active skill has a CD of 5, but starts off with preemptive strike. Those are kind of the scenarios that I'd be looking for to take Ruby over Barton. But at this point, for me, I think I'm going to be taking Barton and over her. All right, that said, let's move on to the last character, Florine. And I gotta say, like, a chef's kiss. Okay, so Florine is a Thunder Attribute supporter who has pretty decent stats, to be honest. Like, I see 3.1k, I'm like, you know, for a supporter, that's pretty good. And so let's start things off with the active skill Slither Zone, which is going to have a CD3 and preemptive strike at max breakthrough. And so in a nutshell, her active skill is essentially like your Louise or your Isvan, but even better. And so just by that logic, I would say that she's probably going to start off at 0BT on a CD4 with 0 preemptive so no preemptive because that is in line with the other two times chain combo units okay so like i said she is a two times chain combo unit where you can actually cast your chain combo twice if you activate this active skill before using it however the six star the upgrade to this one is that at the same time the number of tiles required to trigger thunder aurorian chain combos is minus one pretty pretty nice to be honest in my opinion a very thematic upgrade like it's very supporty and i think it fits florine and so next we have lightning iron where we're going to be doing 145 percent or whatever damage in a diamond shape radial shape and then two surrounding clusters uh i think that's quite solid honestly i'm actually a pretty big fan of the diamond shape and to have it on the first stage of the chain combo is pretty nice and on top of that she is also functioning as like a pseudo detonator if you guys think like victoria that's the first person that came to mind 
3.1k attack at like 145% on diamond shape, radial shape, and clusters. It sounds good, man. And so lastly, we have equipment skill bolt assist, where the damage for all thunder or Royan chain combos of different ranks are increased by 5, 7, and 10% respectively. This kit is so incredibly simple, but it is like incredibly effective, on paper at least. It's just like everything is so supporty, where you've got like the two times chain combo, as well as the lowering of the requirements for the chain combos for Thunder Aurorians. And on top of that, you've got like a damage amplifier for chain combos on the equipment skill. It's, yeah, it's just so simple. And so I think that is what is going to make Florine like super, super effective. The fact that she is pretty versatile, like all of these effects can be applied to anybody, she's probably gonna fit in like anywhere. And so you guys have heard my biased opinion in terms of meta, I think Florine is the pull on these three different, oh, not three banners, but three characters. However, for a moment, let's go into DGen world. I'm gonna say like in terms of waifu factor, Florine is Bay. So honestly, that's pretty much it for the evaluation. I want to know what you guys are thinking of in terms of Florine, Ruby, and Rouge. Are you going to roll for them? Do you think they're looking pretty busted? For me personally, I don't know if I will roll for Florine. Like, I am really battling myself to not roll for her because they are permies, but she is really cute and her kit is pretty sick. But honestly, I want to roll for her because she's cute, okay? And so my guys, let me know what you think about them as well as if you are rolling for them down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving a comment then thank you guys so much because it means you've made it up until the end of the video. If you did enjoy this video or find it helpful, then please consider a like. And if you would like to see more, then please consider a subscribe. But otherwise, my guys, as a hamster with a baseball bat once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.